happened to Bert. You really? Can't, well, she's the voice of reason. She's yeah. the reason I, the Tupac. But it me, makes it shorter and easier. She's the reason the Tupac and me got shot in Las Vegas. <laughs> She really is the reason Tupac is dead in you. Like, people have no idea. And the my friends that do know me are like, don't let anything fucking happen to that lady. <laughs> it's like wrap her in bubble wrap because he's really nice to be around. <laughs> so she would always tell me like, you have to say it happened to Bert. And I go, but as an audience member, I need to know it happened to him, meaning yeah, me. It, it, you lose the audience when you go, I know you guys all know this person, but this happened to a friend of mine. It, but I don't – in them. hindsight – I would have liked to kept I would have liked to have found out on my own if that was the case because I'd still be telling the story. Yeah. Now I realized I don't need I've talked to Tracy enough and had conversations. I've been in fist fights alongside Tracy yeah. at the Melrose Improv. Yeah. Uh where I could tell that story. Or what I do when yeah. I do my CSI chunk, I replace I switch David Caruso out with other celebrity people, like anybody would be better than David Caruso. Like Joe Pesci would be like, you fucking quote me about a multiple homicide. You yeah. fucking prick. There's fucking two bodies here. Multiple. I'm a fucking 18 bodies. Stack them up to the fucking drawbridge. You Jew motherfucker. Are you fucking kidding me? I do a lot of fucking favors for you, don't I, Frank? And then they play the Who music. And then I'll do like Ina from the Food Network. Like, oh my goodness. This is like a murder, but somebody turned it up a notch. <laughs> <laughs> you, yeah. don't tell Jeffrey how bad could that be and I'll do like Forrest Whitaker and I'll do Keanu yeah, yeah. I'll do Sandler like ah, there's a lot of dead bodies out here you know and uh, I'm a how you doing I'm detective Adam Sandler and I, it's pretty good you know with that shut up <laughs> and then now I just switch Tra- I plug Tracy into there yeah. And then I tell the story about Tracy uh, and me getting in a fist fight with audience members at the Melrose Improv because we were both fall down alcoholics. And Tracy kept going up to audience members that they came out of the room screaming, I miss my daughter. Oh, hey, and guys. him yelling, I miss my daughter was like an invitation to fight. Tracy doesn't have a daughter. He has three sons. <laughs> and like one of them's like, old, best, one of them's be- like, one of them's like older than him somehow. Like, I'm not sure how that worked out. Like, I think it's his foster parent. He fucked it up in his own head, but real quick. So. That story, I just wanted to put to bed. Yes, because people. Are I put asking, it to bed on Rogan's podcast. People are because Rogan Twitter, called me and said, it. "I want to talk to you about it." And I said, yeah. "I'll totally talk to you about yeah. it." And so I went over to his house, and he goes, he, "I remember Rogan brought me into the kitchen, into his kitchen, and he's like, just off, like off the record, tell me what happened." I told him, and he goes, "Okay, never mind." Yeah. And so then we just sat down to his podcast, and he's at the end, he was like, "Can you tell that story?" And I go. Of course. Yeah. It was like, yeah, okay. Because I had already told it and you, and you had said, you called me, I was in Cincinnati, you're like, I'm never fucking telling it again. And I was well, like, no, All you right. can't. Once people go, well, that's not, film. that's yeah. not, yeah, go ahead. there's no, that's not really his, story. so that story goes out the window for me and I realized it's almost like what Barry Katz always used to tell us. If you need, if either one of you guys need a Tracy Morgan PCP story to headline, you should both get out of the business right now, man. <laughs> so now I just tell other Tracy stories and I've found the audiences Sometimes I'll go early, just I'll say something and go, yeah, and I'll just get hyper. Yeah. And I'll just lift up my shirt and stick out my belly. I go, tonight in prayer, everybody's getting <laughs> pregnant. I like, I, used to I like love when, Portland. When Tracy I am would on, read Pokemon I am a trailblazer. cards. What was the Pokemon card? Oh, one night in Ontario <laughs> Improv, I took my son's Poke cards, Pokemon cards out on stage and I just said, this is all, this is, a, this is like how Tracy Morgan talks. Oh yeah, Dugong's a water type, and you know he evolved from Seal. <laughs> My man was Seal, but he was only a number three level. But then, if you're a water type, you gotta get your game on, and you gotta evolve into Dugong. <laughs> he evolved into Dugong. <laughs> Dugong evolved from Seal. I'm trying to tell you, y'all don't listen about it, the, Chauncey. The part that really frustrated me about listening to you tell that story is that you never told what I believe to be the funniest part of it. I don't remember. The funniest part was when I met him, he was doing obs- it was at the Boston Comedy Club, he was doing observational material. And Tracy's observational material was stuff that had happened to Tracy. You don't think, don't you want to touch my dick? That's not observational material No, his observational material was... uh, (laughs) (laughs) His observational... Oh, my God. First spit take ever. (laughs) No, because I know know what Bert's about to say. And it is fucking amazing. Sorry. (laughs) I just spit water all over the deck. Are we... Hold on. Are we good? I think I almost ruined $16,000 of recording equipment. Because I totally forgot this. Oh my god, <laughs> Tracy Morgan. Go ahead, Bernie. His observational material is in the back, and he's like, you know, I was like, like Seinfeld loses 
loses a sock, and we all lose a sock. What happens to that sock? <laughs> Tracy's on uh, the base. Is that legible? What he just said? Okay. And Tracy's on What's the What's the deal with socks? Yeah. And Tracy's like, all right, all right. Who remembers finger fucking by the handball courts? <laughs> yeah, y'all remember finger fucking on the handball courts? <laughs> You'd have that bitch posted up on the wall. <laughs> the best one. You got your head in the armpit just to smell that stink. Yeah. <laughs> like what the That's, fuck? And like. Like the white people in Irvine or at Helium Comedy Club in Portland, where I'm going to be very soon, are like, yeah, totally remember that finger fucking by the handball courts. <laughs> like that was his, you know, Seinfeld's like, how does the pubic hair get that high up on the wall in the shower? <laughs> yeah. And Jay's exactly. like, y'all remember finger fucking by the handball and courts? And then he says, so I remember that night. You got, no, no, something. sorry. You got your head in your own oh, armpit. You smelling your own yeah, stank. You smelling Just your pussy you, popping that bitch. Yeah. She, you, and you, she's you, got a back against the wall so now i have a visual of tracy posting up fucking precious just pam pam <laughs> pam 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 and you she's got just your head in your armpit you got your head in your armpit smelling your own stink yeah and then he goes then he said something that was genius that i didn't get until recently he goes yeah i got a pretty dick you can suck that with the lights on and i was like what a weird and then i was like i don't get a lot of blowjobs in the dark now that I think about it, I don't like to have my dick just shining in the in the light. And I was like, that's a really brilliant – if he had just worded it differently. I, I think you're being very liberal with the word brilliant. That okay. It's a blowjob <laughs> with the lights on. So anyway, <clears throat> but yeah, that, I'm glad to put that to rest because I – What? I just want to make sure there's nothing that I didn't want photographed. Okay. We're yeah. good. So yeah, so Bert uh, – it's his Tracy Morgan story. He gave me permission to do it. Then Bert did it and then I said, you know what? I can't do it anymore because it's Bert's and I don't need to do that story for – that. I'm not being cocky. I'm no, no, you, liter- you don't. I'm literally, I can tell other Tracy Morgan stories and uh, that's how that goes. But sometimes I'll just be like eight minutes into the show and I'll just lift up my shirt and go, somebody's getting pregnant. <laughs> and that bides me like a half hour because when I'm on stage – it's a countdown to when the first guy yells, walk in. Oh. Tracy. I remember being on the road with you and be like, I'll get to it, okay? Yeah, like there's a reason the Eagles play Hotel California. Dolphin cock. And you're like, you just there's, sold the punchline. There's a reason the Eagles play Hotel California at the end. It's a hit. <laughs> are you the guy that, I always say, are you the guy that goes to the Black Crows concert and the second he hits a seat? Remedy. He's not play Remedy. Remedy. He's not play Remedy. Remedy. Three songs in. Where the fuck is Remedy? It comes at the end, <laughs> stupid. Relax. I'm not Dice. I'm not a jukebox. If you want to yell shit at the performer, go see Dice. <laughs> hickory dickory dock. <laughs> Do walking. <laughs> so Bert wrestled a bear. This, I just told, I, this is a, a uh, true story that happened with John and I who used to work for a guy John named Mark. Moore, John Moore, incredible writer in Hollywood. It was my first job. You I really worked with are. John. John Moore, if I can digress for one moment, John Moore, which might be what I say the most in the podcast. <laughs> can I like, digress? I gotta write, we we got to get back to fucking Amarillo still. Uh, <laughs> John, John Moore is really like uh, Barry Pepper, the sniper in Saving Private Ryan. He's like the writer up in the bell tower yeah. that will take the show out. Like yeah. he is the secret guy. Are you union yet, you prick? Don't answer that. No, he's all right. He, he does. Uh, Bert, uh, John Holland Moore and uh, his website, of course, is jmoore.com. Bert, please continue. <laughs> Just tell us to don't. You know. Okay. So anyway, on a podcast, they don't want to hear like here's how the whole well, John's in the room. Went. Well, yeah, but people in the on the listening okay. on the All Long right. Island Railroad are going, yeah, but I'm not John. Just tell me the bear story, Bert. I had a show called Hurt Bert on FX. That was that you said this is going to make you a, a bear. star. Tell me what happened when you I'm wrestled the bear. Telling you, I got to set I it know, up. No, but you got this fucking four score and seven year ago preamble that has nothing to do with the story. I need to tell everyone that I had a show. It's not going to make any fucking sense. But they go, how the fuck did you get it? They want to know how I got to the bear. I had a show on FX where I take dangerous jobs for the day, and I the catch was I have to get it was hurt. Dirty jobs before dirty jobs. It was dirty jobs means jackass, yeah. and so I would be a MMA fighter, a dominatrix gimp, a stunt pilot. Uh, you name it. If it was dangerous, I did it. We're in. So you, one so day, one, of them, you one day they called the me and they're like, Go. "Hey, do you want to fight a bear?" And I'm like, "Who does that for a living?" And they're like, "You do on Thursday." So, <laughs> I, so, so I show up and it's it's a nine foot grizzly just sitting on a park bench, as dumb as you'd imagine a bear to look. Just no, like no, like wait, 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 wait. What do you mean sitting on a park bench? Like, like, wait, like, does, a, like, did he have a break? 
No, we're at we were we went to yeah. He's he's smoking a cigarette, <laughs> flipping through his like, iPhone, going, "Oh shit, I got tweeted from the Beaver." <laughs> like no. you, like usually bears are like in bear areas. With this a guy is a, with a stunt fanny pa- bear, a fanny pack with bacon bits in no, it. No, that's no, that's the lions. That's the lions. And this is and chimps. And this dogs. is a stunt and bear. This bear is just like fuck it. I I'm gonna go get a smoke. He's sitting in a park. You roll up, sitting and there's up. an unsupervised bear on a bed. No, 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 no. That's one of the funniest visuals ever. He's over on the park bench. Go get him. Anybody listening to this, anybody listening to this high right now is right is going to have a hard time coming back. Okay, so like our engineer, it is a movie bear. This is a bear that's been in movies, so his trainer's there, and there's happens to be a park bench at the place where they keep the bear. So he's sitting on a park bench. I just sitting on a park bench. I just that's what I remember. And his feet touch the grass. <laughs> He's a fucking nine foot grizzly. He's just going like this. Just does he look like Seagal, like with his gut over the bench? <laughs> I don't remember. He's, he had, I don't remember. He's on a fucking park bench. He's, he's just sitting when on you're a putting, park bench. When you're, putting, he's just, when you're putting together a bear habitat, at what point when you're the civ? Said, hold on, wait, 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 at one point. When you're a bear, when you're a bear guy, and you're the civic, oh, when you're laughing, hold the mic out. I can't help it. Yes, you can. When you're the when you're the civic engineer putting together the bear habitat, and you go, oh, swinging tire. <laughs> we'll have a whole bunch of fruit, and then you go, well, where are we gonna put the bench? <laughs> and they go, what do you mean? You go, well, put it by the you- pergola. <laughs> <laughs> put it by the cappuccino machine. Wait, where's the Pink's hot dog truck? Put it. Don't put it too close. Like, what guy goes? Well, where's he gonna sit down? <laughs> we was he wearing any clothing? He's no. He's All right. So he's a naked bear. He's, he was wearing a Hawaiian shirt and no. khakis, and then they're like, "Dang, time, we're on." And just one minute, he's like, "All right, all right, I'm in." <laughs> Stepped on a cigarette. No, he was. For those of the- you that don't speak Bert, he was wearing a Hawaiian shirt and khakis, <laughs> smoking a cigarette. They said, "Bear, we're ready," and he stepped on a cigarette and said, "All right, all right." <laughs> Bert, Bert, okay, the young Don Knotts over so, here. <laughs> oh, Andy. <laughs> So anyway, so I go up and I go to pet the bear. Now, the trainer, the crews, everyone's already there. Ridiculous idea. So right? Already up. you're a fool. I want, what? Well, that, Dude, I you thought, have a fucking inhaler and you don't have asthma and you're like, let me pet the bear, get to know it a little bit. Uh, yeah, exactly. Because I want him to but smell you- my hand. <laughs> <laughs> what? But the, that's what you would do with a dog, right? You let no, a dog yeah, I saw hand. that on Bugs Bunny. <laughs> Whenever you're chased by a bear, let him smell your hand. No, Play I, dead. We all know how you get rid of monsters or bears on Bugs Money. They've taught us. Act gay and you will not get beat up. Whenever Buddy, Bugs Bunny was about to get like murdered, he'd go, Oh my, if an interesting monster can't have an interesting hairdo. And the, and the monster's like, oh, I'm going to kill uh, Ooh, wow, this is fancy. Yeah. All right. So the, bear, so you the trainer us- said just right, what you sorry. said. He said, you're out of your fucking mind. Get over here. So he pulls me aside. He said, you're breaking protocol. He grabs. He <laughs> says, "He says you can't just meet like the bear. The bear doesn't. Periscope. The bear doesn't know you or anything." So he goes, "Take these." He gives me five marshmallows. He says, "When the bear is not looking, <laughs> when the bear is not looking, very discreetly put a marshmallow in your mouth, and then, <laughs> and then he says, walk in front of the bear and show him the marshmallow, like just like oh, and allow the bear to engage you and and like step to and take the marshmallow out of your mouth with his mouth. This way, he'll learn to trust you." And I was like, fuck that. I go, who thought of this? The bear? Is this the bear's idea? Because what am I, borrowing money from him? Why he do I already got them to build him a park bench, so you never yeah. know. <laughs> so he goes, th- he looks at me like real serious. He goes, this is how we do it. Like real hard, intense. I go, and, there, and Tim Scott's there, and uh, one another producer friend of ours. Yeah. And he's like, no, nah. he's like, I've seen him do it. This is cool. The bear's not going to fucking hurt you. And so I go, okay. So I, Have you noticed that bear trainers, like when you work with dog, any animal you work with, they or like anytime you do a show and there's a safety meeting and sometimes like you're just firing blanks and the safety meeting you're like really I'm shooting a blank into yeah. the air you got to put plexiglass over the entire crew and everybody's wearing goggles like all right. yeah. but bear trainers are the most cavalier bizarre guy more than any other animal I can't believe we're breaking down subspecies of animal <laughs> trainers and it's true like we, I work with bears my wife's worked with bears and you're like your bear trainers like don't put your hand by his face are you crazy put a marshmallow in your mouth and let him <laughs> eat it out of your face he said this that's way yeah. Safer. My wife worked for the bear on the sitcom Nikki, and she had to rehearse dance numbers all day. And she sits down. They go, just go sit next to the bear, quick, quick. And it's her. No, I think it was the Drew Carey show. And it was 
it was yes they did it was very nice it was parked much there also <laughs> it was it was the it was the show god what was the name of the show i think it was the drew carey show it was norm mcdonald that, no it was norm it was the norm show yeah it was norm mcdonald and my wife had to sit on a bench with a bear between them and nick just came are you from, shitting they, me right now no and nick uh was this had coming, to be my bear they had to come from a <laughs> if a fucking bench is involved they, <laughs> they had 